Hi guys, well, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. I've got a lot to show you this week. Yeah, we've been busy, um, really have. Uh, we're going to start off in this greenhouse actually, and it's um, tidying up my grapevine. You even show, I'll show you how to do a, a cutting. Dead simple. Even a monkey can do it with a blindfold on. So, uh, but however, there's a bit of advice I want, and uh, it'll come after I've pruned it. You're going to see there's a, there's a part of the vine that needs. I don't know whether I should cut it or not because it's right next to the main trunk of the vine. You'll see in the video, it's a bit tight inside this green now, so you're going to see me doing a little bit of pruning. I'm not going to do too much, and I'll show you what it looks like before and what it looked like after. There is another grapevine in here which you're going to see as well. And you get an idea what we're trying to do with this grapevine. So, with that, let me show you putting the grapevine in. Or yeah, trimming the grapevine, I should say. So, let's make a start with this. <coughs> these out. In fact, if you, you cut these, go, let's cut it back to, you put that in the ground now, in fact I'm going to do that, I'm going to stick it in the ground, I just shoved it in the ground here, I do a few of these where I just stick them in the ground, I'll show you me doing that in a bit hopefully, but um, yeah at the moment, Just uh... oh, for God's sake, Tabby, I didn't cut the wrong one. Oh, thank God for that. Thought I cut the wrong one, then, guys. That was close. <laughs> I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave this here for now. Because I'm not too, I'm not too sure about this whether I can cut this out without causing damage further down. You see, if you look down here, this is where the main stem. This is the stem I want to save. However, this here, um, I'd like to think I could cut it right here. But, uh, what's your opinions, guys? Is that too close to the main, the main, the main um, trunk of the grapevine, or what? Let me know in the comments and if, uh, if, 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 if I can, I will cut it. Right, so I say we need to so swing the camera around here. I'm just going to cut these back to the nodes. What the heck's that? Oh, it's a grape. <laughs> I wonder what the hell that was then. I need to do is chop this there we go chop that there. right really really butchering this thing but it's in a good cause right so that's where we we've ended it there um, it'll grow around the back. Like I say, I've cut all, all this, what you see here. Right, what I will do, some of that velcro here just to stop it sliding off these um, these rails Put a bit of velcro around it just to keep it on brilliant stuff that so there we go right now then it's gonna get really hard now because I've got to see if we can throw the camera up here Oh, this now. I'm not too sure which is going to be the best one. That's the main branch there, so I don't want to chop that bugger. Right, I'm going to have to put the camera on, on, on pause here, guys, because I really do need to concentrate on this. Um, I've got, mate, if I do the wrong cut, 
we could end up um, with two, with a year of um, hurt and pain. <laughs> so I'll be back, right back after I've done it. So this is the trimmed up um, grapevine. Uh, sorry about the cut being in the way guys, but one branch goes over the door and one branch goes along the ceiling. Now you see how it was, it was everywhere. Um, I would have, I'd like to have cut it there, but it's going to kink anyway, so um, I grow it down to just above Manny's head this year. And again, this one here comes off the main branch and goes along here. So we've got them going down the, the side, the roof, and eventually it'll come over here and go along here. Now this is another grapevine coming up. However, it's not produced any fruit in two years, so if I don't get any fruit off this this year, it's going to get whipped out and thrown. Um, yeah, I do need to clean the greenhouse. It's on the inside, this. No, it's not. It's on the outside. So I need to wash the outside. <laughs> I do the inside as well with Jay's fluid. And when I say Jay's fluid, I've got to be very careful when I come down here to this little puppy. But yeah, um, what I do need to know is this here. Can I cut this out here to about here? Or would it be wise to cut it to here? Or could I cut it back to here? Um, or should I just leave well alone? I don't know. So that's why I've not cut this because it's so thick and it's right next to the main 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 trunk of the grapevine. You see these cuttings here? All they are just uh, top and tail them from the, the nodes. Um, just above the nose and just below the node. Plant them in, just stick them in the ground and leave them. If you get leaves on them, you crack, you crack it. Put this four there and I've just stuck one there. And all I just want is a few, few leaves to know that they're going to come to life. And then we'll pot them on. But, uh, you know, it's a simple way to, to get cuttings from your, your grapes. Anyway, so that's what we've done. The next job, clean the greenhouse. That's going to be fun. All the green slime there. <laughs> That cat's looking a bit um, bedraggled, isn't it? And uh, Manny. Manny's looking bedraggled. He's lost his hat. Where's his bloody hat gone? I need to get him a new cap. In fact, I might give him one of these um, these these shirts. Although I might have to put some something in the sleeves to puff him out. Because this hasn't, he hasn't got no arms. It's just a bother. I had a mate used to talk to him through the door. He used to think it was me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's getting on. It just takes a bit of space. That that uh, I just I just put it there just to you know. But when you get people coming on the allotments, they look and they see what looks like someone in the greenhouse, and they think twice before the the you know they do anything. That's why he was there, and he's he's been there now for the last few years. That there is Jasmine. I just put some water in that. There's me hedgehogs and there's me, me rats there. And me, I, did, I need to put batteries in that thermometer. It's, uh, I think it's about just 50, 52, 53 Fahrenheit at the moment. But um, the digital part needs batteries, so I need to sort that out as well. Just here, we've got some raspberry canes. They were in water, but I thought, no, I'll just I'd take them out of the water, plunk them in the soil here. I'd actually plunk some um, compost over the top of them and just leave them for now. And we'll find a place for them later. This is my low quat. I actually transplanted it from that pot there into this one. The only trouble was, I didn't have my camera rolling to show you what we've done. But it's absolutely awesome. I grew this from a seed um, out... Um, Mike from Potting Along brought back from, um, from I think it was Argentina or something like Chile or something like that. He gave me two seeds and this is the result and it looks absolutely awesome. The next time you see this greenhouse all this will be, um, be clean and like I say it's not, it's not on the inside, well it's a bit on the inside but it's mainly on the outside where it's, it needs a washing. So I get the soap and water out there and the brush and give it a give it a a spring wash inside and outside. So from me and Manny, uh, I think that's the update for the, the front greenhouse for the time being. So there you go. So the advice I'm after is it 
can I actually cut it? I do not want to kill the grapevine. It's the only, well, I've actually got a, another um, cutting down here, which is, well, is growing. And I put other cuttings in as well. I don't want to kill it. <laughs> so, uh, what advice before I start to whack into that piece? I know what I've done with the rest of it is fine. Anyway, we're going to leave the grapevine for now and I'm going to take you back into the, the middle greenhouse where I'm going to be um, doing some more bulb salt, um, planting. Now, I've got the very last of the bulbs which uh, I only paid 10 pence a pack for. I've got some alliums, I've got some more tulips and daffodils. The thing is, I've, I've got two pots which is at the side of the greenhouse where I've got the chairs right in front of the chickens. I had two buckets what was growing um, some elephant garlic in last year and as I remember there's no bulbs in it except for the elephant garlic and all these buckets was doing was just there with nothing in them. So I, I brought them into the into the middle greenhouse I got these bulbs I'm going to show you me now planting a few of them I'm going to show you me doing the alliums as well uh, show you how I do my alliums you don't see me putting the um, the compost uh, the, uh, the arse manure in the first two buckets well you will see in the alliums just what I do and I explain more about it when um, when we're in the greenhouse so let's go down there now and show you me doing these more so more than bulb sowing <laughs> or more bulb planting getting all excited aren't we? Well I've been looking around to see where I can put some more um, daffodils and tulips and I realised these two buckets have got nothing in them now last year I threw a couple of elephant garlic in here so what, I've got a load of um, tulips and daffodils and stuff um, in, in the greenhouse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill these buckets with daffodils and tulips. So I'm going to grab them now and we'll go in the greenhouse and I'll show you what I'm going to put in them. Guys, we've got these uh, trumpet mixes here. Uh, there's Miss Elegance and um, some Ronaldo there. And I'm going to put them into this pot and then we'll put them straight back outside. And we've got these ones, these... Uh, Sea dove uh, trumpet mix and then um, these uh, Calaclius um, miniature daffodils as well. We're going to be putting in here, and then they can go outside. We have got some Star of Persia um, alliums. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put them yet. Uh, we'll think of a place, but as you can see, all these others have all started to come up now. So these will be going outside shortly. These these buckets, these ones that haven't come up yet, um, and that one, what the thing is on there. It won't take, it'll be a couple of days or so and they seem to pop, popping through. Once I get them to about this eye, then out they go. I'll just leave them out on the plot somewhere, probably around the plon, pond to make it look nice. But what we're doing, we're going to plant these. So what I might do is take some of this soil out of here, stick the bulbs, arrange the bulbs in a certain way, then throw the soil back over the top of them. I think that's the way to do it. So pity I haven't got enough room in here to swing a cat. However, I'll try and set the camera up and show you what we're doing. So we'll be right back folks. So I've taken some soil out of here. There's about three inches of soil I've taken out. So what I'm going to do is uh, stick these uh, Ronaldo trumpet mix in, these purple ones, and we're going to mix them with these pink ones. And we we'll arrange them so, arrange them like this. move them a bit closer I was gonna put I'm not gonna put that one in it's a bit of a duffer that one however where's that other pack gun what I just had oh there it is I'm gonna put these ones in as well again you can stick them really close These are slightly bigger. Move that to the outside. The extremities of the pot. So 
So that one in the middle. Yep. Uh, I think we've got them um, spaced uh, good enough apart. Now all I'm going to do is just tip the compost back in over, well the soil actually, it's not compost. Tip it back in over the top of them. There we go. That's them done. So I'm going to put that one back outside now. Uh, get on with the other one. But right, these ones are these these are these daffodils are not as big as you would think. So we're going to put these around the edges. So these go around the outside. Don't worry about the um the, the the these things here. This is nothing. Just leave it in it a rot down. So we've got the the daffodils around the outside. Now we're gonna stick these uh sea dove tulips, these purple ones, and stick these in the middle. And believe it or not, these are already started to to grow me. Look at them. <laughs> so we stick them in here like this and they'll soon find their way up. So we know these are all gonna gonna flower. So there we go, we've got these in as well. Now all I've got to do is soil over the top. Nothing easier. There we go and put these back outside. Gently press it down a little bit. Slap the sides, there we go. And I don't need to water them because they've been outside and the, the soil's, um, it's, been, it's been raining today, so the soil is lovely and damp. So it saved me a job. Now I could have done the same with these other buckets here, these ones. I could put them outside, but I'm, I think I'll leave these ones in for the time being. They're not, they're not in the way, but these ones are going back where I've just where I've just taken them from. So yeah, four lots of, well, three lots of tulips and daffodils. They should look nice next to the bench. All I've got to do now is figure where I'm going to stick them ones there. These star of Persia's, absolutely beautiful. And to think I paid, I think it was about 10 pence a pack. Well guys, we're doing the last of the the bulbs today. And uh, we got some alliums. What I've just done there is added uh, about 3 inches, 4 inches of horse manure in the bottom of that bucket. It's well rotted down. I'm going to add some soil now into the bucket. Mix it in a bit. So I've got the soil to the side of me. So just give me a second and I'll tip some in. Right. A few bits of what we don't want. So there we go, we're about three and a half inches deep there. And what we're gonna put in here are these puppies here. They're called Star of Persia, they're an allium. And we've got eight of them, but however, there's one of them that looks a bit funky, so I might not use all eight. Just open the packet now. Tipping them in. That one's a bit dodgy. That one's perfect. Look at the roots on that already. That one's ready to fire up. So just sit that there. Uh, sit that one there. Again, roots is there. You can just see them starting to form there, the little buds. 
put that one there and I put these other three in the middle so the the planted about well they will be planted about three and a half inches deep I'm going to do now is just add uh, the compost over the top of the buckets I will leave these in here for now until I start to see them coming up just about this high out of the bucket then they go outside then but uh, okay, a bucket of compost just tip it over bloody big worm there There we go. Weed. <laughs> oh. I think that's a centipede. We don't kill these. We hope that they eat all the wood lices and what have you. Um, and what I will do is just put it on the floor. I'm not going to kill it. I wouldn't kill these. These are the, the things what I'll eat. All the, the the nasty creepy crawlies. So I just put him down there. Anyway, he's gone down. I didn't throw him. I just sort of gently lowered him down. Although you can throw these a mile and they bounce and they'll be all right. But anyway, there we go. That's the the, the two two stars of Persia buckets done. And don't they look lovely? Right, I'm going to tidy up now. Uh, done enough planting for today and uh, as, I was, as I say what will happen here now is the compost what's in there the horse manure will rot down and it will it will lower this soil by about an inch and a half and what I'll do is comes comes um, May June I'll put some summer bulbs in this over the top of it once these have died back I'll put a uh, summer bulbs over the top and then more compost over the top so then you've got two layers then of, um, of flowers you've got the spring flowers under in the bottom and the summer flowers on the top and that's all we do we just water them and leave them and each year you'll get two blooms one in spring and one in summer and uh, yeah they should look really really nice I do like these um, Star of Persia there's, there's, a, there's a lot of these alliums that I actually like but this one's uh, one of my particular favourites three pound <laughs> I paid it I think ten pence a pack I paid we'll see how these do for ten pence I'm sure they're gonna be fine but we'll leave them in here for now so that's it so there we go that's the last of the bulbs that are going in the plot this year, well the, the spring bulbs that is. Um, now in the last video you've seen um, I was doing the rhubarb bed on the front part of the plot and I saw almost empty space where there was, where there was a rhubarb crown. Now I put a tiny little crown in there about a year ago and it didn't, it, it's tried and it's tried, it was still trying when I, when I dug it up. Um, the other day and um, fortunately for me a friend of mine Sue um, she was digging the crown out which was right over the path where she wants to put a path and she I was telling her what I'm gonna do so oh, she says you can have this here so anyway um, I went over and, uh, and uh, brought it over in the wheelbarrow and um, Unfortunately, I had to disturb the birds. You probably see a bit of that in the video. In fact, I'll show you the birds later on after I've done um, done the crown and put it in. So I'm now I'm going to show you me replacing the the crown of um, this rhubarb. And when I finish it, what you won't even re you won't even notice that I've actually replaced it, and it'll look like it's always been there. The rhubarb. So let me take you over to the front part now and show you what we've been doing. Here comes a cold, oh, so that's a blue tit there. The cold tit's coming on the feeder there, yeah, that's a cold tit there on the, the, the feeder. And you've got a blue tit, so there's the difference between the two of them. The, the cold tit's slightly smaller, and um, the stripings on its head have got black and white stripings, but they're more, more pronounced than the blue tits. If you look at the blue tits there, um, they're slightly different. I'm surprised we ain't see any great tits come on the, the feeders as well. You know, you know, you normally see them all. Um, but at the moment, we've got just 
just the blue tit and the the cold tit there on the feeders. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, I've right, got zooming out in it. Silly me. Cold tit there inside that new feeder up. There it is. Throwing seeds all over the floor. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to disturb these little darlings because I've got a, a um, I've got a rhubarb crown that I'm going to be putting into the bed in a minute. I've got to replace an old one and I've got to put a new one in. The old ones, um, I don't know what's happened to it. It's uh, not like me to get it to grow. I mean, I think the, the, the hardest thing to kill on an allotment is a crown of rhubarb, but I managed to do it. So, yeah, we've, we've got birds all over the plot and they're right where I'm going to be working. <laughs> so, I'm going to go over there now and show you the, the crown and I'm going to show me actually putting it into the bed. We're quick enough, then the, 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 the birds can, um, can come back. In fact, some things make them all scarper, so that's good. So I don't feel guilty. Oh, no, they're coming back. I'm going to say it won't make me feel guilty when I go over there to, to put the rhubarb in. If you I've just pan the camera out a bit and we just go down there, you can see the wheelbarrows there with the rhubarb in now. And uh, well, the birds are all in fine feckle. So, guys, this is uh, one crown, it's split in two when I pulled when I lifted it up. However, that is going where that bottle is. Uh, um, you can see it's just a tiny bit coming up now, so it's, it was only a little bit when I put it in, so anyway, I'm going to dig an hole and that's where it's going, into that hole, so we've got a faff about now. I've got me rate to rate the, um, the chicken manure, uh, the chicken manure, the horse manure off it, and we'll dig an hole and plonk them in. So with that, let's crack on. That's the target where we're going to be changed, uh, digging them out. I may need a bucket as well to, to put the soil in the bucket so it doesn't look all inside it. Never ends. the old crown I just dug out.
So there you go, folks. Uh, notice how the crown it sits above. Um, the crown sits protruding about two, three inches above the ground. Whatever you do when you're putting rhubarb in, don't bury it below the ground, otherwise you just you will kill it. But yeah, we just replace um, one crown what had, what had failed there. So um, I've left the bottle there. The, the reason why the bottle's there is just to show me where the crowns are in winter when I come to spread the the horse manure in the bed. Uh, we just uh, as we we did the all, we used some of the the compost what was on the top the horse manure. Uh, mixed it in a little bit and then put the rhubarb on top filled in stamped it in firmed it in that'll look that'll come come up good that keep an eye on it in the next couple of weeks it'll be as good as the rest of them so that's a one job that i needed to do yeah so like i said the job's done there with the um with the rhubarb and uh I have noticed the birds in the trees at the side of me waiting to come back to the feeder so I'm not going to hang around here too long but uh, yeah we've uh, it doesn't look no different except for uh, there's, a, there's another crown there <laughs> so yeah we've uh, put the crown in we've just left it so it's above the so you don't bury the rhubarb otherwise you'll kill it rhubarb is very hard to kill however we wanted to kill that that uh, it wasn't dead it was still alive but we managed to sort it out and uh, we've replaced it and it looks just like it's always lived there so thanks to Sue uh, we've uh, got a nice crown of rhubarb um, actually give us some of that elephant garlic that um, well it's not the same stuff that Nigel and um, Nick give us it's, it's the the stuff what produced from what they give us anyway I give her a few cloves and thanks her so uh, yeah i'm going to show you the birds now where uh, i've got to put some i'll put some food back in the feeders after i've done all that and within two minutes um the birds were back and uh you'll see a few i think there's about four or five varieties of birds which will come to the feeders and uh, i'm gonna there's another little clip where you can see birds going looking in the nest boxes as well so there's gonna be a bit of action there so with that seven minutes of the birds and like i said i love watching the birds and chilling out and just sat there outside watching them and this time of year um, is about the best time you're gonna you're gonna see them. So let's show you the birds. Oh well, guys, uh, I've just topped up the feeders. I've just, like I say, we've done the rhubarb. Topped up the uh, sort, sort that crown out. Um, just refilled all the feeders, and uh, it won't be long before um, we start to see these um, the birds return to the feeders. Oh guys, little cold tits there, long-tailed tits, and. Uh, if you look, um, just over there, you can see it. There's a little robin there in the tree. Also, I can see a little colter as well. The the robin's got its back to us. The colter will be on the feeder in next to no time. I say these birds, they, they come from the back of the, the allotments and they, they're just backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these have got nests over there already. I do like the cold tits though, the beautiful, I like the black faces. Here they are, here's one now. Little, little stri stripes of white on their heads as well, pretty awesome. That long tail tit just flew onto the feeders. In fact, uh, and they got the cold tits there, and uh, the blue tits coming on now. It didn't take them long to come on after the after I'd done that crown. As soon as I put the crown in, I top the feeders back up, and uh, as you can see, the birds are back on the feeders. It gives me something to do. I enjoy watch. I love watching the birds. And um, they're, here, they're backwards and forwards all day long. I mean, these never. There's the, the, the birds on the feeders every five seconds. <laughs> you can see a load of sparrows have come over now. Yeah, there's a sparrow. Bit, they, these are the bullies, the sparrows. 
We'll start to push them all off here. More, more sparrows coming on now. You get all the, um, the tits moving into the trees at the back. They wait while the, the sparrows have had their food. As you can see, there's more coming. Just look behind the, um, the feeders in the trees. You know, always a great tit now. I can see a great tit. That'll bully them all out of the way. It's just casing the place up at the moment. It's right behind the trees. It chirps, chirping. I think it's a bit scared, that one. It's the biggest of all of them. It's, it's, but I think it's coming over any second, will it? We've got cold tits there, blue tits, long-tailed tits, sparrows. And it would be nice to see the great tit come on the feeder, but no, it's... Uh, It's not brave enough. Oh well. You can hear it chirping. It's right at the top of the tree. It's getting braver. Is it going to come on? Oh, it's gone down onto the... It went down under the feeders rather than going on the feeders. It's right in front of the feeders now, and the picture. If you look through the feeders, you can see it um, just at the top of the long feeder. It is. Meantime, I'm about 15, 16 foot away, if that, from the feeder. Oh, it's building up. It's uh, it's getting closer. It's, it can't make its mind up. <laughs> oh, here it is. Right. It's uh, there. It's just come on the feeder now, and it spooks every bloody thing up. And they've all scarpered. Typical that. Very very um, edgy bird that one. But yeah, we've uh, we've got quite a selection of birds, and like I say, the backwards and forwards. That bugger there scared everyone away. But for how long? A couple of about a minute, and then they all start coming again. In fact, I can see a young, um, a young um, great tit there. Is that no? Is that a young great tit? I can I think that was a young great tit that one. Well, nothing's facing the um, the sparrow. That's getting well stuck in that. Is it? Is it a sparrow? Well, it is a sparrow. Is it, is it a common sparrow or um, an edge sparrow? I can't really make it out. I think it's um, a, a common sparrow. There is edge sparrows just below, along with um, the, the um, blackbirds and what have you. Well, little cold tits just made in a... Uh, just popped over. You can see a little robin just bouncing about the, on the, the bottom um, of the bed. Yeah, let's swing the camera down here. He's just down here behind the um, behind the, the bushes. He's perched on um, one of the um, scat. Oh, he's gone in the tree. Typical. Where he is, he's right in the centre of the picture now. Let's swing the camera in. You little bugger. He's flew on the arch, there he is. I think that's him there. Yep, I can see him. Would you believe it? I would have left the camera where it was. He's come on the bloody feeder there at the top. There he is on the feeder now, feeding. Hey, you can't make it up, can you? Right, so there you go. There's a few more, few birds on the feeders. I think you've seen about five or six species there in the last um, five, ten minutes. It just goes to show you. There's such a variety of birds which visit the plot every day. You've only seen about, I'd say, 20% of them. Just up in the box there, you might be able to see it. Little, um, little blue tit. There you are. So that's uh, already checking out the boxes.
So we've already got them um, it, look, checking out for nest, nesting. Uh, we have got eight of these boxes. But um, you know, we've, got, we've got four there. There's another four a bit higher up. And then just below, the, on that pole at the bottom, just down there, we've got them down here as well. There's a nest, nest boxes. I'm going to get my hand in the picture just over here. It's just gone out of focus. But yeah, it's nice to see them there. Examining the boxes, ready for breeding. Woohoo! Go on, you little bugger, get in there. Actually, it's been an out, in and out. So there we go, guys. All the birds are starting to get a bit on, eh? <laughs> Let's swing the camera back to the feeder. Spam the camera out a bit. Yeah, little cold tit there. Couple of cold there, another cold tit's just come. Oh god, they're all having it. Bloody um, blue tits scared the cold tit. They're slightly bigger the blue tits, and, but when you get the, the great tit comes, they bully them all, so you know. And right behind the kitchen, right in the centre, I would say, if you look through the, the bushes, you can see a little robin there in the tree. You can just see the red. Well, yeah, you can hear him now. Chirping away. He's saying, spring ain't far away. So the penultimate thing I want to show you is me doing some bunions exhibition. Now, I did um, 12 uh, early in the week. I had some toilet rolls. I didn't have enough toilet rolls. And, um, well, I, I was actually given some um, more toilet rolls. And... Uh, they're actually the really big ones from Asda. So I'm going to show you me doing a few more now. I had about 20 seeds left. So what I did is I doubled them up into the, the toilet rolls. Let's not keep on talking. Let's show you what Guys, we're doing. what I'm doing. I didn't have enough of these um, bog rolls. That's what they are. Um, they're quite wide, these as well. The, you get these are wider than the the normal ones. Asta's um, skimping on the toilet rolls. They made these bigger, these tubes bigger, so they don't have to put less toilet roll in. They think we ate already figured that one out. But uh, naughty Asda. Anyway, at the end of the day, these help me out big time because the bigger, the wider they are, the better, the better they are for me. I can put more compost in them. And um, as you see there, we just filled them halfway full. Uh, I've already done um, about about ten of them. So we've got these nine here now, and uh, these are the Bunyard's Exhibition, what I actually put in the last lot. So I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just going to tip them out into my hand and show them you. So there they are. And all I'm going to do is pop them inside there. In fact, you know, you just put one in. I, I mean, I, you get all, you get all, everyone going, oh, you plant them this way, just chuck them in. They'll find their own way up. What they do, they'll come towards the, the light. So... In fact, what I might do, I might stick two in each of these um, because just in case one doesn't fire. And if the two come up together, what I do is just nip the top off one of them. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm not wasting them. Uh, so we've got, we've got two in each there. So there we go. Oh, I've got a couple left. I don't have an ear there. I'll throw them out for the mice because the mice absolutely adore them. I'll just get a bit of compost. So again, this is clover. It's damp, uh, so I don't have to um, do any watering for now. Just just below the below the edge, because what happens as they push through, they push the soil out the out the toilet roll. So you know. So these will be going into me my grow house and uh, well, in a couple of couple of weeks time they'll be up and then we'll put them outside it gives me a bit more time to sort my canes out as well I've got some canes there which they are, I grow them up uh, I think we're due for some snow so I'm not gonna just plant them out now you could do you know what I mean you could just plant them straight into the ground um, but 
you know, at the end of the day, better off getting them started in the greenhouse, really. Just harden them off, a couple of days, you know, take them in and out of the greenhouse to harden them off. And then on the probably the third day, stick them in the ground if it's warm enough. So, so I'm, I'm just like I said, just uh, doing a few more. No rocket science to so this this method. There we go. I don't have to water him. I mean, I, oh, okay. Go on, go on. We'll put everybody at ease. Let's water a little bit there. So go on, I've watered them, but they didn't need it. Anyway, they've got they've got the bath that they need, so I'm just going to stick them in the grow house. Um, might as well just throw that in with them, eh? Gives you an idea what they are. But I know what they are. Are these the only? This is the only um, things I actually grow in these. Are these um, bunyards exhibitions? So that's what we've got. We've got another nine there. I think there's a. I'm going to count them. There's 12 in there, so we've got 21. I'm only going to do five. 15. I'm going to do. We give six away to someone else when they're done. So in fact, what I'm going to do is just leave them like that in the in the tray, here. and uh, we'll keep an eye on them. So there we go, folks. That's how to do it. Two minute job, it probably took five. So, yeah, they're in this um, little grow house here. There's uh, all together, there's, uh, there's 21. I only need um, 15 really. I put 15 canes in and then I plant them in. The only trouble, the reason why I do them this way is because the field mice have a field day with the buggers, and some, some years when you do them, uh, you see where they've dug them down and they, they dig them out, and uh, you know. This is the best way to do them really. Start them off in here, a few days in and out of the greenhouse when they come up to about this site, harden them off then chuck them back out because if you leave, you do them in the greenhouse and you throw them straight out you're gonna in this sort of um, weather they'll take them out. So the last thing I'm gonna show you was yesterday we was chitting some of the um, potatoes, that's chitting some of the potatoes. Um, I got three packs which was delivered to the shop, the, the, the allotment shop, and I think we paid about £6.30, £6.40 for the three bags. Two kilo bags they are, and um, there was a Cara, what was the other ones? I can't remember. <laughs> Yesterday I can't remember. Alan Parlett and uh, Maris Pier. Um, so I'm going to show you, I, I, I already did two of the, 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 the packs, I'm going to show you the final one, um, the uh, first earlies. I'm going to show you how to chit them, i show you how to store them when I'm chitting them and um, we'll take it from there. So let's show you what we were doing yesterday outside on the table out here, it was quite nice really. We Just in between, in, in between um, rainstorms. And we did it as well. Hi guys, so I'm going to have to be quick about this because we got intermittent um, rains um, in and out all day today. And uh, I want to show you these. These are my, um, what I'm going to be growing this year. We've got main crop Cara, we've got second early's Maris Pier, and we've got first early's Aaron Pilot. Now, how I chip my potatoes, I put them in these trays, and inside them you see these uh, egg trays, and I just sit the potatoes in them uh, with the chips facing up. And I'll put them into me, me shed at the back of the allotments next to the window so they've got a bit of light. And we just leave them to tick away. And um, they'll be perfectly fine there. Uh, I might put a bit of fleece over them um, later on today, just for the night time. But yeah, these are the three varieties that I'm going to be doing this year. We might see if we can get hold of some Sal Paul Mirror and we'll have a go at them as well. Um, by the way, I get these through the shop and. Uh, all three of them comes, I think it's about £6.30 odd pence for the lot. So, you know, at the end of the day, a couple of pound a bag of spuds, you can't, and the two kilo bags, you can't knock it. So I'm just going to get a Stanley knife and I'll just quickly show you how I actually put them, how I stand them up inside the, inside the uh, cartons. This is the last one, so we're going to get stuck in. So what we're doing here now, 
we're doing the Aaron Parlet. These are the last of the potatoes I'm going to be doing t today. And these are going to be the first ones we plant, the first earlies. They'll be going in in, a, in, a, in about four weeks into pots into the greenhouse. But um, right now, I'm just going to put them in these, um, these trays here and shit them. So, again, Stanley knife. Very sharp, be careful when you're doing this. And uh, these are quite big potatoes, these. There's where the umbilical is there. And that's where the chits are there. So as long as you, you know which is way up, you know which way you're going to get the chits. So, yeah. Some really nice ones. See, umbilicals there. And you can see the chits are just starting to form there. Now these are going to be nice potatoes, these. Yeah. You don't get many of them for a pound. <laughs> See, umbilical chits. In fact, there's some chits on that one there. Right, so we've got the last ones here. There we go. We've got a spare one. Stick it in there. Again, we roll this up. And we shove it down the side so we know what we've got. So there we go, they're all, all three are all chitted now. And they're all stacked. We'll stick them in the shed before it starts to rain. So with that, that's uh, the conclusion to chitting my potatoes. I'll probably do another couple more trays, different ones, but for now that's what we're going to do. First, second and uh, main crop. So here are my, um, my potatoes. They're on the table in the, the, the back shed, right next to the window, chitting away nicely. I'll come back later with some newspaper and uh, I'll cover them um, for the night time. If it gets frost, I'll bubble wrap them as well. Um, but. It's uh, quite warm inside the shed, it's airtight, nothing can get in it really. Um, I have to move a lot of stuff out of here um, shortly. But yeah, that's where they are, chitting away on the table, right next to the window. So there you go, that's how I chip my potatoes. Them, them first dealers will be going in here, there'll be ten, 10 pots put in here very shortly. And uh, I'll be putting two seed, seed potatoes in each of these. Um, when they get them in here. I could do them in the other greenhouse, but I'm going to do them in here. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been doing this week. Um, like I say, we've got... Oh, I've got to go over onto my brother's plot. I've got to sort his, um, his chicken pen roof out. Now, it got blown off and it just ripped the sheet to shreds. And uh, anyway, he's, he's put another one on, a temporary one. And it's, it's only been on for 24 hours and it's already started to tear. A 30 quid sheet it's a 9 by 6 I told him it's a 5 by 4 the really thick stuff um, with the the holes in it it's where you can tie it down so he gets us he gets a, a 6 by 9 and um, well you're gonna see in the next video what he did and then you're gonna see what I'm gonna do when I go and get the sheet for him crack out <laughs> him and my dad in, the, in, the, in that storm, that's why it's all ripped the way it, well, you'll see it. So that's another video. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of more seed sowing in the next episode. I, I'm not, the only thing I've sowed are them beans and the, and the leeks. And um, in the next video, you're going to see me doing all my seed sowing. I know everyone's all going, oh, look at my seeds, they're all this big. It's too early. And if you, you're going to do with your seed sowing in, in a cold greenhouse, you've got to give it another week or two. 
I've sold in I've sold it when it's been three inches of snow on the roof but it's been a warm inside the greenhouse it's not warm today so anyway I've talked long and hard and long enough I hope you've enjoyed the video if anyone can give me an idea is it safe to cut that where I want to cut it and um, the grapevine that is uh, let me know uh, let me know whether you've got your uh, seed potatoes chitting have you started your, your seed sowing yet um, did you survive the weather uh, without um, any damage of the last storm and uh, just remember there's another one on the way um, tomorrow Saturday and Sunday apparently so fingers crossed everyone comes through I'll see you real soon goodbye for now Thank you.